Billboard releasing a top albums list is kind of crazy, though. Because I just never, I never look at Billboard and I'm like, oh, yeah, y'all are known for, like, I don't know. I just don't associate them with, like, quality picks. Not because I think they're a trash, like, corporation. I just think that y'all are, like, they're a numbers-based company, so I just wouldn't expect them to put anything, like, yeah, like, this is just crazy to me. Like, first, for all the dogs, Scary Hours edition, like, that being number 20, not even, a, not even a dig at Drake or nothing like that. It's just, like, you're talking about best rap albums. It's like, all right, I get what y'all are about. And that's fine, bro. That's cool, bro. That's cool. That's that's whatever. Um, the buzz was as big as a Super Bowl, right? We're talking about the buzz. There was a rumored blockbuster appearance by Nicki Yachty, champion Drake's rapping, deeming it the best of his career, which it wasn't. And of course, the OVO demigod. Demigod is just so crazy. Despite striking out all three of those pre-release promises, he still reminded us the dogs why he remains music ultimate Goliath when battling half. Pin okay. I gotta stop reading right there, bro. I have to. I'm sorry. This is just the 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 level, like the inches that are in your throat, bro. I just am surprised that you could even muster up the saliva that it takes to go back into your system to continue living as a regular individual, bro. How are you not dehydrated? How do you have enough saliva for his shit to keep going down further and further down your esophagus? How is it possible? Carl! Your name's fuck Jack! This is just so crazy. This is so crazy. This is so. Wait, how is it higher? How, come on. How is it higher, though? All, all Jack Harlow hate and dick suck aside. Or, or dick riding aside. No, it's dick suck. How. Even though I think these are both bad albums. How in any capacity is Jack Harlow shit better than Drake's? That don't even make sense to me. Carl is the one that did this, too. Carl. The for oh wait no let me go back down no it wasn't carl okay good nah it might have still been carl i don't know terry appreciate you with the big two months despite clutching his first solo hot 100 chart topper last year see they talking about the numbers bro harlow felt his grip softening holy shit what are these descriptions oh my fucking god though he sprinted past the vertical no nah, this is so this is crazy this is crazy though he sprinted past the venerable oh fuck i did it again chat my fault mm. opening week for a sophomore album come on the kids miss you how if you about the hate harlow bulked up oh my god he bulked up chat he bulked up grip so grip grip softening is crazy i'm sorry i don't know i've never heard that before in an album description grip softening is just holy shit the mini set wait finds a nimble harlow outfoxing his foes on common ground to contesting for the throne on they don't love it he was contesting for the throne the throne of what white mediocrity what throne was he contesting speaking on his doubts with jackman harlow rewrote his songs and remains on the path to being one of hip-hop's leading men that is just so cap that is just cap oh my god What's, what's next? Okay, Key Glock is good. Key Glock is good. Like I said, me having that at, at number 25 on my list, I understand it. It's a fun record. Really need no explanation for real. And they don't have a lengthy explanation for him because it's just a fun project. You know what I'm saying? He did his thing into the best of his abilities, and I fucked with it. Uh, 2 Chains and Lil Wayne, welcome to Collar Grove. Nah. Um, but it was a good rap record. I'm not mad at it. If they put this at number 20 or something like that, I would be okay with that. I don't know what comes next, though. I'm not going to say it don't deserve to be in the list. It still was a, a good list, and I could recommend it. You know what I'm saying? Um, but, yeah, it's, it's not bad. I will say that. Babyface Ray Summer is mine. Uh, you know, uh, album experience, it didn't impress this year, which is which is it's, it's tough because I'm a big Babyface Ray fan. Um, I love his music. Don the Bag is one of my favorites. I think that was off this record. So we got that. I think it's another one. I-75 is on here, too. Maybe. I'm not sure. Um, so these are still good records. I just don't think the project in itself was complete, like, all across the board. Um, also, I think he had West Side on here for one where I think he could have easily replaced him with El Camino. But I don't remember what song it was. I could be wrong. Um, but, yeah, this is it, it was it was it was listenable. I fuck with it, you know, um, and it's a good cover. Cover is fucking fantastic. Colorful. I like it, you know, um, West Side Gun and then they pray for me a lot of good records off this you really don't need to explain it to me i get it um this being in your top list makes sense um i feel like it's safe 
putting West Side Gun in top spots because it's kind of like a tried and true formula. You having a Griselda member and your top spots at this point, whether it's like you pick somebody like West Side or, or Benny or Conway or Bodie, or you could put somebody like uh, Rome's. Um, it's just a lot of different people of that ilk that make that type of rap that you could put in, and you really won't get any arguments or debates over it. So I'm just kind of leading myself out of that lane a little bit. Not intentionally, because I really don't think none of the music from Griselda did much for me this year. But like I said, like I just think it's a safe pick. Uh, Rod Wave with Nostalgia. I'm not a Rod Wave fan, you know. I'm just not. Uh, yeah. Don't really have nothing to say about him. No hate, though. Just not a fan. Heard Girls, Girls, Girls. And didn't see the hype. That's just me personally, though. That's me personally. Dot Sean, my top favorite rappers are Jack Harlow, Tom McDonald, Eminem after 20. Just stop talking. Just stop talking. Nigga said Eminem after, after 2015. V's with Ganger. Who's got next is a constant refrain in the music industry, but stepping forward to answer that question on the rap front in 2023 was V's. The Detroit, see that? See that? Detroit. The Detroit rapper. Say it with me, chat. Slow mo. The Detroit rapper launched his navy wavy label also the title of his breakout 2019 debut mixtape in partnership with warner records this year gaining national props with this hot 100 about okay see they're talking about the numbers again i don't like when they just throw that in there bro i don't um but yeah they're basically saying it was popular it made a lot of noise and that's why we putting it up here uh which is good i still like it larry june and the alchemist the great escape uh, a lot of enjoyable records off here. I think that I think Larry June dropped another project with somebody else this year too. Uh, that was actually better than The Great Escape. I just don't remember what the name of it was, which is a crazy thing to say. Uh, it's a crazy thing to say because I don't remember the name of the project. What well, Cardo? Sean wrote the list. No, I didn't. Larry June wasn't even in my top spot. I forgot to do honorable mentions this year though. Um, so. He would have been in there though. He definitely would have been in there. Destroy Lonely if Looks Could Kill. Uh Destroy Lonely over The Great Escape, Ganger, uh Rod Wave, even though I don't listen to him, West Side. Nah, it's just not justifiable in me personally. You already looked at this? No, I didn't. I haven't looked at Billboard's list yet. Um keep up, pussy. Uh one of the most promising. Yeah, I don't care, bro. Travis Scott Utopia. Hmm. Good pick. It's really no justification needed have you heard the album you know have you heard the album have you listened to it opium music is so mid they got good ideas but now see this don't make sense how do you put offset set it off right above utopia like you literally have the understanding that utopia is like right there how do you do that at the very least swap them be respectful you know what i'm saying that just sounds crazy to me um offset had a decent record though it was a little bit more interesting than i expected i still enjoyed his one record from 2019 i think it was father of four more than set it off but set it off has some stronger records on there it did the intro especially yeah, very strong rapping on there and i loved the one he did i think it was with chloe uh i forgot what the name of it was though shit was shit was gas it was amazing no name sundial again i feel like it's safe to keep putting no name in here at this point so we just gonna get we gonna skip past it i've already told you my thoughts on that uh dave and central c split decision is not an album it's an ep uh cool little collection of songs though but it's four records off this shit how you're putting this above Utopia, the record we just saw, uh, Offset, Drake, Jack, all of that. I just, I prefer this over the Drake and Jack. Don't get me wrong, but it's a four song EP, bro. Get off the dick. I'm sorry. Four songs, bro. Chill. Um, so, okay. Not a, it's, it's a fun album. It is. You know what's crazy about this pick, though? It's like the more and more I see it, the less and less genuine I feel the placement is. But it's a good album. It is, but I just see it too often is my, is my biggest question. Like, why do you keep doing that? Like certain people doing this early on makes sense to me. It would be in my top spots as far as, uh, you know, singles are concerned. I get it being in some others, but some of y'all, I feel like y'all faking the funk. I feel like y'all, some of y'all don't really be listening to sexy. Y'all not really sexy for real. You know what I'm saying? Some of that just don't make sense to me. It just don't. But it's a fun album. You can't take that away from it or take it away from her. She's 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 good. She came at the perfect time. Um, a lot of her music was banging this year. I can't hate on her. Uh, six is a little crazy considering the things below her. But 
hey, if they put an EP of four tracks on here at number at number seven, hey, might as well put Sexy Red too. Let me look at the description though. Few stars can rival the breakout year that Sexy Red is having, and even fewer can say that they delivered a project as consistent and gloriously ratchet. I just ah, uh, it's just the descriptions, bro. I just I hate these descriptions. I hate these descriptions, bro. They they sound so like they sound so like I don't talk to black women. I don't talk to black people, bro. Like what do you, what is that description? What do you mean gloriously ratchet? Ah, oh, okay. Introducing by the off the wall runaway hit Pound Town and features follow up hit Ski Ye, uh, looking for the hoes and Hellcat. Oh, Hellcat's SRTs is a good track. It's a good track. I'm not going to lie. It's a good hell. I forgot about Hellcat to SRTs. Okay. Okay. Let's chill. Let's calm down. Uh, Hood Hottest Princess is a manifesto of all the deliciously hood ghetto fabulous energy that this is like the litter. The, the writer of, uh, of of the shy wrote this, bro. The director of the shot had to have, wrote, had to have written this, bro. They had to have, bro. This don't make no sense, bro. Like, why would you say that? I, it's it's mad other way like deliciously hood ghetto fabulous energy all right gang i got you bro parlaying the gritty house party feel of boosie and gucci's most beloved hits for gen z sexy's breakout mixtape is the kind of top of bottom or top to bottom collection of bangers that feel distinctly free from the trappings of contemporary hip-hop commercialism um and that's that's a fact that's a good statement right there take all that other shit out the way that being one of the things it seems like it's a it's a top to bottom collection of bangers that feel distinctly free from the trappings of contemporary hip-hop commercialism that's a great description of that i like that description great um near the end of the year the st louis rapper repackaged the mixtape with 11 new tracks that further expanded both of her sonic profile and songwriting hallmarks by way of winning collaborations with summer walker 42 doug and chief keith cool you don't think so at all you don't think what at all ain't you a bottom what the fuck first of all what are you talking about second of all no third of all the fuck this got to do with me fourth of all why are there four kung fu pandas fifth of all what do you mean you disagree need you to scroll down to the next one why All right, bro. I'm sorry, bro. This shit is so whack. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, bro. This shit is so whack to me, bro. I I'm just not a Doja Cat fan, though. You can't get me on a Doja Cat ding dong train. I'm breathing. I don't have a problem. It's just I just don't think it's a good record. I think like everything that she does on this album is emulation. You know what I'm saying? It's and it's weird for me to feel that way. Consider we about to get into Doctor Umar right now. I just feel like it's all like some shit that i get from a rapper who's emulating everybody else that's just really how i feel i don't feel like nothing crazy original uh is happening on this project i feel like everything that i get off of this record is done with uh someone else in mind in terms of inspiration uh, one of the most interesting concepts or ideas on this record feel like an eminem throwaway from like 2002 that's just me though this is me not a doja fan um gun is a gift and a curse some highlights some highlights but not number four obviously but some highlights um we got back to the moon you a lot of people like fuck you me the first track on this shit is great the single that intro the album is good um got another other couple moments on here um it's a stronger effort though do i think it's gonna's best album I don't know i really don't know with no collaborations and no huge moments outside of the moments that he created for himself which i think is impressive but doesn't really speak to like his collaboration power when it comes to other rappers i think he probably has stronger moments on previous records he probably did but this is still an impressive thing that he was able to do with, with this with this record and being like a known snitch now it's just like crazy it's crazy that he was able to bounce back a little bit. So I got to give him his respect for that. Uh, Tizo, well, how do you sleep at night? I'm going to be honest with you, bro. Still haven't listened to this album in full. Can't really give an opinion or a thought process on it right now. But uh, once I do listen to it, I'll let you know. But from what I've heard from Tizo, 
He definitely sounds interesting. I'll say that. Hell no, this album was cringe. Was that necessary to say? What do you mean? Was what necessary to say? Overrated? It's entertaining? I'm going to check it out at some point. I will. Um, but I don't know much about Tizo. I've heard him on features. Um, we heard him, I think it was during the Amazon show in 2022. I think we did. We watched that show. Some live show that Tyler was on, I think. And he was performing. Um, I think we also watched his music video. That's when we was first introduced to him. So, hey, I, I'm, 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 I'm open. I'm open. I'm open ears, bro. I'm open ears. Yeah, bro. It's just, this is like, what are we doing? This is, isn't true. Like, it's not true, bro. It's not true, bro. Sorry. I wish it were. Just for the cover alone, this would never make it. I'm sorry. But let me hear the description. After giving fans a taste with her breakout 2020 single, Munch, uh, Ice Spice dished out more delectable hits with her debut EP. She proudly wears her crown on Princess Diana, flips Diddy's I Need a Girl, uh, which is a horrible song, by the way. I'm surprised I got as much play as it did. For her first Hot 100 hit with Lil TJ assisted Gangsta Boo and introduces phrases like baddie friend and smoochie to the pop culture uh, lexicon, all while breathlessly bouncing off of... Uh, yeah, bro. Yeah. Nah. Nah. I'm a Ray better. I agree with you. Editor gotta be a TikToker. Who wrote this? It was definitely impactful though. Which one? How many songs did this EP have? Also, this is another EP, not an album. But I think this has seven songs on it. And it had a couple good songs on it. It had a couple good moments, but like, nah, bro. Number two is crazy. But again, it's Billboard. Like I said before, I don't expect much in terms of like quality picks from Billboard. They go on based off like, all right, who did the most numbers? And let's try to categor categorically place these in what we think might be best. You know, a lot of stuff didn't get mentioned probably because it just didn't land high. This is like, I understand, but it doesn't really make sense having Killer Mike at number one when... Sexy Red is number six. Central C is number seven. Uh, Ice Spice is number two. Doja Cat, I think, is number three. Like, it's not It's not even a bad album. It's just it doesn't belong on the list. It don't even go. Like, how did you land here? How did you get to number one being Killer Mike's Michael? Um, the Atlanta native. I mean, I get it. I get why. If anybody wanted to have an issue with this album, in terms of, like, killer mike's ideology here sometimes conflicts with like what you might expect because like if you're a run the jewels fan first which you really should be a killer mike fan first you'll be like yo what is he talking about sometimes because it kind of conflicts with some of the messaging that it goes like okay i, I gotta be against the establishment against the power on this side but on the other side on your solo work you kind of sing in a little bit of a different tune it's a little bit of a i won't call it a hypocritical situation or point of view but like it could shock you if you're coming from one aspect of his career and you're you're, you're pouring yourself into this one you're like oh I thought you were the same, like, all across the board. But it's okay. It's still a good record. It's got a lot of great, powerful musical moments on there. I don't agree that it's number one of the year. But if somebody wanted to put it in a top spot, the rapping is still strong on there. Production is still great. Feature choices are great and resourceful. I still like it. You feel me? I still like it. Nigga seeing Ken Carson. Mm. They throw in some actual dope people to try and clean up the bullshit. It's like, wait, it's lists like this that make me believe 2023 was dull for rap. I don't think so. I just think that there's a certain level of catering that needs to be done for a list from a company like Billboard to make sense. Like an inclusion of a Drake or an Ice Spice, a Doja Cat, some of like the heavier hitter hitters. You got to like question a little bit sometimes because it's like, OK, do you have to include this because you are a generally numbers based company that gives people their flowers based on the virality of them over the quality of them generally so you do kind of have to cater to that a little bit some of these picks make sense based off that lens but it just like this is just a glaring like where the fuck did this come from that's just where i'm a little confused but i mean it's not there are good moments on the ice spice there are good moments on the uh on the on a gunner on the on the sexy red of course 
Um, if somebody wanted to, like, to me, it just don't make sense if you're going to put Hood, Hottest Princess in here and all the resourcefulness and how big this record was. Like, this belongs over the Gunna album. This belongs over the Doja Cat album. Uh, this belongs over the Tizo album, even though I didn't listen to it, so I can't say. You feel me? I can't really say. Um, but it don't belong. It belongs above the Ice Spice. It's like, what? Well, how did you get here? But it's okay. It's all right. It's not that big of a deal. Somebody else's list. Question it. Don't question it. It's cool, bro. Sean, do a great chaos re-listen. Yeah, we gonna not do that. But, but. Why does no one mention Gumbo? Am I am I losing you? Or are you losing me? What the fuck? Oh. I mean, Gumbo will, Gumbo will fit as an honorable mention. Nigga said by T Grizzly. I didn't know what you meant by that. I had to look and up Gumbo. But yeah, that was a good record. I would, I would, I would, I would, respect, I would respect that. If I did a top fifty this year, I would have put Gumbo in my top list. I would have, because Gumbo was surprisingly good. Rolling Stone had Billy knees and no name as their top three. Lol, this year doesn't seem to have consensus opinion. That's cool though, because I like, you know, um, I like. What do you call it? What up, Sean and Chat? Hope you all had a good or great Christmas. Mine was okay. Mm. Realization of becoming an adult and Christmas means different things. Oh, God. Oh, God. It does to some people. But, I mean, the consensus around a list don't mean that they have to all be, like, collectively the same thing or anything like that. It's just, um... I, I'm looking for, like, how everybody got to their... To their conclusion on what the best thing was, you feel me? Album kind of crazy to me, but to each their own. Wait, not gonna lie, having Ganger lower than Sexy Red kind of crazy? I don't think so. I think they're equally fun. I do. I think they're equally fun albums. I think they're equally fun records. Um, if somebody wanted to put Sexy Red above V's, I'm okay with it. Even having V's on the list to me, I think is a huge dub. So it is what it is. You feel me? But outside of that, like it's it's some chill shit, bro. It's cool. Nothing crazy. And it is what it is. You feel me? You won't do a re-listen because you know you're probably going to like it. I'm not doing a re-listen because I don't want to listen to the whole album. But Jennifer's Body low-key sounded better to me over time than I thought it did. I, I don't know what happened the first time. I think y'all were telling me that I didn't fully listen to it the first time around. But the first Ken Carson project that I listened to was, I think, 2022 earlier. And I think it was X. I don't think Jennifer's Body isn't off X. It's not. So it is what it is. You feel me? I don't think I could be wrong. I might be wrong. Who knows? It's hard to say.